Mistake proofing. That sounds like a dream, doesn't it? Who wouldn't want to have zero errors, zero mistakes, and zero defects? How is this accomplished? In part, it is through the Pokeyoke method that helps to control the production process of information and products when applied. It does this two different ways. The first is a control system or prevention system. The control system stops a process when something occurs that is out of compliance and does not let the process move forward. The warning system or detection system does not stop the process, rather it makes the operator aware of an issue and prompts them to stop the machine or deal with whatever issue may have triggered the warning. Wherever possible, a control system should be used. This is because the control system does not depend on a person. It stops the process based on any abnormality. With that being said, if you cannot use a control method, you should use a warning system. There are many different types of systems for both control and warning. Some use lights, others have sounds, and many use other forms of sensory notification. Both types will make people aware of an abnormality, but only one type will stop or control the process automatically. The key difference between the two is that one is automated and the other is not. Pokeyoke also uses three different methods to facilitate the control or warning of an error. Those three methods are contact methods, fixed value methods, and motion step methods. Each of these methods are very effective in detecting abnormalities. We will look at each of the methods individually in upcoming lectures. One of the ways the Pokeyoke system can control or detect errors is by making contact with abnormalities. Contact methods work based on contact. In other words, if a product physically contacts something, this should trigger a device to stop or not. Ultimately, the contact method uses some type of sensing device to identify defects in a part shape, color, size, or other physical attribute. For example, many cars will beep when they are backing up. If the car gets too close, some cars will automatically stop. Other contact methods work based on energy. These energy-based contact methods sense when something is not correct. In the same example of a car, vehicles will oftentimes increase the rate of the beeping when it gets closer to hitting something. Contact methods may also identify errors or defects using a shape, size, color, or other physical attribute. Limit switches and proximity sensors are oftentimes used to gauge how close or far something is from making contact and ultimately preventing an error from occurring. For example, if we want to avoid placing an item incorrectly, we may have an asymmetrical design that allows the part to fit only in the correct orientation. If the item does not fit, it will make contact and prevent the item from going in. The contact method is one of the most frequently used methods in Pokeyoke. In the next few lectures, we will look at other types of Pokeyoke methods that you may consider using. We'll see you in the next lecture. Fixed value methods, also known as constant value methods, is a technique that can be used to both control and warn a person when the process is not in compliance or an error has been made. Fixed value methods can be used in a variety of different ways. This method should be used when a fixed number of parts or information needs to be entered or attached to a product. 
It can also be used when a fixed number of operations needs to be done at a workstation. When using the fixed method, a device counts the number of times something is done and signals or releases the product when the value is reached. The basic idea is that if you have a fixed number of steps, operations, or actions that must occur in a process and it needs to be done, it can be counted. When the process does not reach the required number, the process will either trigger a warning and tell the operator what to do, or trigger a control and stop the process altogether. The fixed method can also be used with the number of items. For example, if you were building a piece of furniture that you purchased, your instructions may include a bill of materials. Let's say that one in particular was for screws, and your instructions called for 10 screws, or the exact number needed. Let's say you then put your furniture together, and at the end of the process, one screw was remaining. Because there is a fixed value on the number of screws, you would know that one screw was missing. Fixed value methods often use counters, limit switches, or some other means of tracking the fixed value. Some different ways that a fixed value is performed is counting or measuring the number in advance, using a bill of materials, or establishing an obvious standard. If you have a quantitative number that can be tracked and used to prevent errors, you'll want to look into the fixed value method. Now, let's look at one more method of implementing polka yoke. See you in the next lecture. Errors can occur when a step in a process is skipped. Sometimes those errors will turn into defects. In the motion step method or sequence method, the focus is on ensuring the process steps are followed before starting the next stage. Not allowing the mistake to be made in the first place is a great place to start. The motion step method essentially determines whether the necessary steps in the process have been followed. Color coding, labeling, tagging, and other forms of visual management are common motion step methods and used all the time in polka yokes. These are inspected to ensure the prior steps were performed before the current step can begin. This oftentimes includes sensing or tracking motions or steps that may occur in the process. For example, if a process step has established a cycle time and the step is not executed in the appropriate cycle time, this may cause the machine to send a warning or even a control in the form of a process stop. The motion step method oftentimes uses sensors and other devices to track and count steps as they occur. If the step or movement does not occur when it should, or occurs after or before the appropriate time, the sensors will trigger the equipment to send a warning and may stop the machine to regain control of the process. In other circumstances, a process may be established with items that are laid out in a sequence. This helps the operator fill out the appropriate information in the correct sequence or select the appropriate items at the appropriate time. Keep in mind that the heart of polka yoke is error proofing. We've outlined the contact method, fixed value method, and the motion step method. But, like any continuous improvement tool, you may discover other methods as well. As long as you improve and prevent errors and defects, those methods should be used too. We'll see you in the next lecture.
three most well-known methods used in polka yoke are the contact method, fixed value method, and the motion step or sequence method. Each of these three methods can be used to warn an operator or to control a process. In addition, they can be used at the source for inspection or in the informative inspection format. But how do these different methods sense that an error may occur? How do they sense that something is not right or that an abnormal condition is about to occur? Typically, anyone trying to mistake-proof a process, especially if they are following Dr. Shingo's suggestions in the book Zero Quality Control, Source Inspection, and the Pokeyok Method, will use one of three types of sensing devices. Physical contact sensing devices, energy sensing devices, and physical condition change sensors. Physical contact sensing devices are one form or method that can be used to sense when a process may have an abnormal condition. These devices work by touching the product, machine, or object physically. Examples may be a limit switch. These can verify the position of an item or identify whether an object is there or not. When this occurs, the limit switch may trigger a warning to the operator or control the process by shutting the machine, line, or process down. Energy sensing devices work in a similar way to physical contact. The difference is they sense energy rather than physical contact. Some examples of energy sensing devices are vibration-based sensors, photoelectric switches, proximity switches, area sensors, displacement sensors, tap sensors, beam sensors. Energy sensors use forms of energy, such as photoelectric switches, which use beams of light to measure items that are transparent. Some backup cameras also use sensors to gauge the distance that is left before an object is hit. There is one other type of sensing device that contains three subcategories. It is called condition or conditional change sensing devices. These devices are broken down into three categories that contain pressure sensing devices, temperature sensing devices, and electrical current sensing devices. Pressure sensing devices look for changes in pressure or errors in pressure. For example, if an air compressor needs a certain amount of pressure to operate correctly, the device would monitor this and warn a user or shut the machine down if an error occurs. Thermometers, thermostats, and temperature gauges are different tools that can be used to sense temperature changes. Some examples of different processes where you might want to use a temperature sensing device may be preheating an oven, warming up injection molding machines, preheating dyes, and freezers that need to maintain a specific temperature. Like other forms of pokey yolk, if the device finds that the temperature is not correct, it may warn the user with a signal or automatically adjust the temperature by turning it up, down, or even shutting it off. The final type of sensing device is a device that senses when a specific electrical current is altered or changes. Like other devices, it attempts to identify a current that is abnormal. This can be used in electrical currents, welding, and wiring of items. Whether the device is a pressure sensing device, a temperature sensing device, or electrical current sensing device, ultimately the device must get the attention of an operator to correct the abnormality it needs to be able to control the process itself. For example, many facilities use Ondon lights to notify operators when a machine is running correctly and when a problem occurs. The Ondon changes the visual based on the status of the machine and provides a way to identify normal and abnormal conditions. While visuals are a great way to get the attention of operators, other sensory devices may be better. For example, if an error, mistake, or defect occurred, would a loud noise get your attention quicker or a light? 
In most cases, a loud noise would get your attention quicker than a light. With that being said, you will need to decide what devices are appropriate to get the attention of workers or ensure that the Pokeyoke can control the process on its own. So these are different devices that help us reveal abnormalities and grab the attention of operators. With that being said, it's time for you to go implement some devices of your own. We'll see you in the next lecture.